Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to day 19 of our Inktober challenges. We have already done 18 incredible tangles and today we will be adding the 19th to our little paper tile and then also to our larger piece. You do not need any of these items to complete this challenge or even to do today's video. You can just follow along and create this pattern on anything that you have. So I'm using my Micron pen, a graphite pencil and a blending tool, my two inch by two inch bijou tiles from Zentangle, and then this is just a piece of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock. Okay? All right, here we go. Move that aside and we'll zoom in a bit. There we go. All right, so this is one of my favorite tangles of all time. And in this list so far of 31, there have not been a lot of tangles that I've actually tried before this challenge. So that has been really fun and exciting to play with new ones. But I also just am so comforted when I get to go back to an original Zen tangle. And um, I don't know, this is just one of those comfort tangles. So this is Bunzo by Zentangle. It is day 19. We're going to be doing a lot of ink work in this one. So if you want to grab a thicker pen, mine is the PN, a plastic nib pen. It's about an 05 tip. But if you have an 08 or something thicker, you might want to grab that today. It's up to you. All right, so for Bunzo, I just love this one so much. Okay, I'm gonna start by just putting a little dot somewhere, and that's where I'm going to start my little bunzo shapes. So what we're gonna do is from that dot, create like a little raindrop or a seed, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm gonna start at that same dot, and I'm gonna go up and around and come back down. I'm gonna go up that side a little bit and come back down. And I get these nice little points on the ends. Then I'm gonna do that again. And again. And now I'm gonna go into that first little band that I made. So I've got my little seed, this little band here. So on a couple of tangles so far, um, just in the last couple of days, we've done this technique where we ink things in and then we leave a white space and then ink in some more. We're going to do it again for the third time this week, but it's such a wonderful effect that let's just keep doing it. Okay, so I'm going to start in that little band and I'm going to ink up towards the center and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave a little bit of like a rough edge here and I'm going to stop and then I'm going to go to the opposite side of that same band and come up towards the center and stop. And I end up with this dark band with a little bit of a light reflection. It's so pretty. Then I'm gonna skip a little row and go to the next one. So I'm gonna ink up and once I get close to the center, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to come up the other side and do that same thing. If I want to make it a little bit smaller, I just add more ink. This is one of those patterns that you can just do over and over again, and it's so relaxing and you don't have to think about it and you really can't mess it up. 
Whatever you do, it'll work. Okay, so I made that little one there. Let's put in a larger one right here. So I'm gonna start at this point again, and I'm gonna make my seed a little bit of a different size. Then I'm gonna go up and around that. And if I want to right away, I can start inking that section in. Then I'm gonna go around it again. That one I'm just gonna leave nice and white and clear. do another one and this one I will ink in And since I'm close to the end of my paper, I'm going to stop right there and do some this way. All right, let's do one here. Let's try to change this up a little bit. I don't really want a mirror image that looks like a butterfly. Well, that would be beautiful, but I want to change this up a little. So let's do one right here. Then I go along that outside and back down and ink it in. Like that. Up and around. And you can see the difference here. This one I went right along the side this one I kind of like curved in and it left a bigger white area. They're both correct, it doesn't matter, but you can just kind of see however you do your pen work, it might change the shape a little bit. All right, so these two, I did two of those dark bands. This one I want to do more. So I'm gonna go around it again with a nice white one. And then a dark one. So much fun. Okay, I'm gonna do a small one here. And I'm gonna do all of my little loops first. And I want you to see how, this one I could just kind of make go out nice and straight, or I could start really purposely like bending it. Let's see how that looks when I start adding in the ink. could even do a little one up here if I want to. Let's 
See how this is one of those that can just grow and grow and grow. All right, I've got room for a tiny one down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you notice too, I started with that first little dot, but now I'm letting them grow off of different areas. You can always end yours with the white band. I just really like ending mine with that dark drama. There we go, I'm gonna do my initials and some shading. I just feel so happy when I make Bunzo. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom of each of those little white seeds. And then just push it up slightly. And now we have to be a little bit careful because we don't want to rub our blending tool on the black ink too much because it can kind of roll or you know kind of push that up off the paper so we need to be a little bit careful but I, what I want to do on these is put some dark down in the bottom of each of those white bands so where they make this nice little point, I'm just putting a little bit of graphite. And then I'm gonna push that up into that white area, just a little bit, being careful not to push too hard where there's any dark ink. And then it kind of mimics the little band that we have where we've got the darker areas tucked in and then it gets light as it gets towards the top. And there we go, that is Bunzo. I just love it. Okay. Let me grab my big piece here. Now this is definitely a drama tangle with all of those dark lines. So now I wanna kind of look around and see where I can put that. So if I put it down here, it's right next to this one that has a lot of dark and next to this one and this one that already have those little black and white bands. So I don't think I wanna put it there. If I put it against this one, I've got a lot of dark lines beside each other, which is okay, but I feel like I kind of want it maybe up here. I like the, um, not contradiction, I don't know, kind of the opposite of this is very structured and has some texture, and this could add this element of roundness and fun and kind of balance out this little square edge there. I think that's where I'm going to put it. I'm tempted to put it in the corner because I think it would fit well, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put it here. Maybe let it even grow down here a little bit. Okay, that's the plan. Zoom back in a little. Okay. Let's add it. Of course, you can add yours anywhere you want on your paper. All right, I'm gonna put a dot right about here. 
and I'm just gonna start with a little seed and get a little bigger. Ink that in and then stop in the middle. Beautiful already. Go ahead and do another one and just kind of let that tuck in behind that casserine. Let's do one down here. Remember to always skip one. Look how pretty that looks already. Right, I'm going to do a large one here. I love how that looks. It's also kind of fun to make these reflection areas a little bit wider as your piece gets out larger. Like the band, that reflection would be just a little bit, a little bit bigger maybe at the end. If you feel like your original seed is too large, you can always go in and add another small band in there. Sorry for the bump. Okay, I'm gonna do one right here. I'm purposely making it more on this side so I can put one in here as well. This could truly be like an hour long video where I just keep going and going and going with Bunzo. This to me is the true essence of Zentango where you don't have to think about it. You don't have to plan. You just start drawing it and see where it takes you. So very fun. Let that one kind of bump into the top up there.
All right, I kind of love it. What do you guys think? That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now, one thing I want you to think about too, depending on where you're at with the size of your paper, but it's really fun. Like if you love Bunzo, then add like a little section down here somewhere and it can kind of bring the two together. So it doesn't just have to be all by itself. You can repeat it somewhere else, change it a little bit if you want. So I want really quickly to add, I want this one to be larger so that it really like tucks in behind this one. So I'm gonna do another like white area and then a dark one. Just sort of imagining where that would land. All right, I like how that looks like it just continues out. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. It's funny because this is the one that I said I could keep going and going and it ends up being like one of my shortest videos. But that's just because of the simplicity of it, I think. Okay, um, should I aura this one? That's the question. I think I have to because I've been auraing all of them. So I'm going to do it. You do not have to, of course. but I'm gonna do that. It also forces me to really slow down and focus, which I like. Okay, I've got some extra space up here and um, I think I'm just going to leave it for now and I'll see what I end up putting in this corner. So I don't think I really need to add anything right now. If I wanted to put in a couple of orbs or circles, I could, but I think I'm just going to wait and see what ends up around it. Okay, that just means I need to do some shading. So to shade... Let's see, I'm gonna go back to this one here. I'm gonna add another little area in here. It just felt like too much white space for me. Okay, see, now it looks better. <laughs> Not really, I don't know if it even matters. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of graphite in the bottom of every little seed pod. And then I'm gonna put a thick amount in the crevice of each of those white areas. And I start with a little seed pod and I just push that up a little bit. go into those crevices and I try to move that up while still leaving some white at the top. All right, what do you think? I think that looks pretty good. So I need to add some shading around that casarine or casarine where it goes over my bunzo. I'm 
And I can also put some right here underneath that frame. As if it's tucking underneath. All right, is Bunzo one of your favorites as well? If not before, is it one of your favorites now? That looks pretty cool. I want to compare today's Bunzo with yesterday's Halo, Halo foil, Halo foil, because I want you to notice the drama and the texture. This is a drama tangle. It's got the black and the white. This is a texture tangle where it has a lot of little circles and little lines. Now, if we had filled that background in with black ink, it would have been much more drama. But I think this is balancing pretty well. All right, we'll see you tomorrow for day 20. Thank you. Bye-bye.